Thanks, Jackie. Let's um, call the meeting to order and do a roll call. Good afternoon, Ms. Chairman and directors. Director Watson. Director Colton. Present. Director Neil Richardson. Present. Did you call Emily? I'm sorry, Ms. Chairman. Ms. Chairman Emily Andrews. Present. Thank you. All right, we have a quorum. Great, thank you. So first um, uh, agenda item is approval of minutes and we've got a big stack of them here <laughs> from uh, four sets of minutes. I'd like to um, do those uh, each separately. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll make a motion um, to approve the August 10th, 2022 quarterly board meeting minutes. Any questions, discussion? A second that motion. Great. Um, we'll do a vote. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Director Watson. Okay, he's not here. Yeah. Director Colton. Aye. Director Richardson. Aye. And Chairman Andrews. Aye. All right, so that passes. And October, we have October 25th, 2022. This was a special board meeting. Um, I'll make a motion to approve these minutes as well. Second. Any questions, comments? Request for previous roll. Is that, what was yes. that? We can, we can do that because, um, yeah. All the board members here, that's fine. All right, so moving on to the next. I would just um, ask if there's any object. I think Chairwoman Andrews asking if there are any objections or abstentions for previous role. Okay, any objections or abstentions? No, okay, so we'll we'll call those approved and move to the next one, November 9th. 2022, this was a quarterly board meeting. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Second request and previews, Rob. All right, any um, objections or abstentions for this one? Not for me, no. Great, um, call that one approved and moved on to the final January 18th, 2023, a special board meeting. I'll make a motion to approve these. And a re request for previous, Rob. Wait, right. did you get a second? Did, Neil, did you second? Yeah, I, I second. I said I request previous role for the um, approval of January 18, 2023 special board meeting minutes. Great. Any um, objections or abstentions? None here. None. All right. So thank you for that. Uh, next is the Resolution 22's EDB 11, which is to approve uh, the accounting agreement with the IJAS group, um, LLC. This was previously tabled. I don't know if there's anyone that um, wants to present this. The actual contract was in our packet, so. Uh, yes, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll just, just briefly, if you don't remember um, uh, this tabled resolution, this IJAS group is kind of taking the, taking the place of Reuben Brown for the accounting services for the board and for the administrators. And uh, it's just MEI's preferred um, accounting services group. The reason it was tabled previously is there was a hang up um, in, in getting, uh, their registration for working in the state. Uh, nothing wrong. They just didn't receive it back in time for the board meeting. So therefore it was tabled. Everything is good uh, and good to go. So the resolution is back before the board for approval. Um, another notable side note, just as all other previous contracts that we enter into, there is no direct cost to the board for these services. Thanks, Peter. Um, anybody have any questions? I, I just have a question. Um, if we looked into any conflict of interest, since this is MEI's preferred um, vendor, if you will. 
Um, I, I don't believe that there are any um, conflict of interest issues in front of us. Uh, this is similar to um, the previous accounting firm where the administrators brought um, their choice to us and we reviewed and ensured that they're a, a, a reputable firm and they're registered to work in the state and we are, um, we're okay to move forward. Everything's arm's length transactions. I mean, yeah, yeah, I believe so. Okay. Well, I had nothing from me on this one. Thank you. Great. Can I get a motion? I'll make the motion to approve. Uh, second it, Richardson. Okay. Thank you. We'll take a roll call vote. Director Colton? Aye. Director Richardson? Aye. And Chairman Andrews? Aye. Great. Motion passes. Um, the next item is uh, financial reports uh, to review the fiscal year 2022-23 second quarter draft financial report. Is that uh, MEI to present that or? I'm not exactly sure if that one is um, if we were supposed to do that or just the end of the financial year for it because we were waiting on the engagement letter um, to be signed with our with IJAS before doing this past quarter. So um, <laughs> we have submitted. I do have. Uh, I can present what we've submitted to the state um, for the last one, um, but this past quarter, it will be um, ready for next board meeting um, due to this uh, engagement letter just being signed. I, okay, I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm reading off the agenda here, I didn't get. Um, and much of a, a notice on what what we should be expecting here. Patrice, is is there a um, or, or are you suggesting that you all come back next month with the final review of the fiscal year twenty twenty two to twenty three second quarterly financial report? Or yes, for the second quarter one, um, we were able to get um, Ruben Brown to complete the one for the year ending um, June um, 2022. So that was submitted to state um, auditor, but for the second quarter next board meeting, we would have to present that one due to the engagement letter um, just being agreed upon. So we can table this one, that this agenda item, is that what I'm hearing? Yes, ma'am. Yes, right. it, sounds, it sounds like it was just kind of a miscommunication of this one not actually being the quarterly financial report. It was they had information related to the previous annual financial report that was submitted. Um, so I think it was just a miscommunication of what was to be presented. Um, and I think that next quarterly board meeting, they can they can bring, um, now that IJAS is engaged, they can bring the actual quarterly report in front of the board for review and, and approval. Great, great. All right, so we'll table that agenda item, um, come back to it. Um, the next item on the agenda is resolution 22 CEDB 13, which is approval of the corrected exhibit A to the resolution. And this was really just a typo, am I correct? Correct, uh, this is, okay. yes, this was, uh, and again, the, the resolution was already approved. Hmm. But we went back retroactively at one of the previous meetings, and after they caught that there was a typo and it said 0.01% for the fee, which is was incorrect and it should have been 1%. Um, and after it was discussed with the board previously, it was determined that it actually it needed to be included on an agenda for formal approval. Um, and so the exhibit A should be. Uh, should have been passed out to the board and that we have it as an item on the agenda for approval of the 
um, revised Exhibit A to include the correct percentage of 1% or 1,000, or not to exceed 1% or $1,000. Great, thanks, Peter. Um, I'll make a motion to approve this. I, I, do, I do have a question, sorry. Um, so we don't, so the, we're not, are we amending resolution number 22 CEDB 13 or, or are we presenting a new resolution? Cause it's, I'm, I'm a little confused about what's, what I'm voting on. Like is it, oh, I know we're correcting the exhibit A but are we amending the previous resolution or are we putting forth a new resolution that supersedes the previous one that was approved? No, this is the previous one. We're amending it just to update the exhibit. So the yep. previous exhibit will, re will be removed and this exhibit will take its place. Got it. So this, this resolution is amending the resolution 7 22 CDB 13 13 okay and so so this is there's no new we pre previously approved resolution 22 CEDB 05 hey. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure that I, I'm following here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I looked through the minutes because I thought I saw it. The entire packet. It, it is in the, it looks like it's in the uh, August 10 minutes. Yeah, so I believe, yes. So I believe in the August 10 minutes, that's where resolution 22 CDB 13 uh, was presented and approved. Um, and so I think that the 13 was already approved. And then so this action would be, as Jackie stated, I believe to amend that resolution in the exhibit. That incorporates this updated, uh, to remove the exhibit A that had the wrong um, percentage and to substitute this one. Got it, okay. I'm sorry, I just wanted to make sure we had clarification on on that. Um, so I, 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 I second that motion, uh, Chairwoman Andrews. Thanks, Sunil. Um, Sid, Sid, any questions from you? No, I, I, I was really expecting a, a separate resolution on the amendment, but this is fine. Yeah, that's what I think that's what I was getting at too, but I think this, right. this meets that, that same requirement. Yeah, it's, it's okay. Yeah. It's yeah. okay. As long as we can track it, it's fine. Exactly. Yep. Great. So we've got um, both the first and second. Um, and I guess we can call for the vote. Director Colton? Aye. Director Richardson? Aye. And Chairman Andrews? Aye. All right. Motion carries. And we've got some. Um, open agenda items here, a uh, discussion on lenders. Um, Josh or Patrice, are you going to fill us in here? Yes, and I'm going to share my screen really quick. Cool. Thanks. And Josh, can you speak on the lenders? Certainly. So we have uh, two new lenders, uh, Pace Loan Group and the Sustainable Equity Group. Um, working backwards, Sustainable Equity is a new firm made up of several individuals on the leadership uh, that are based in St. Louis, which would really make just the second uh, lender within the network that has a St. Louis base. Um, they have a number of projects already in the pipeline. Um, they are developing unique uh, part and strategic partnerships with a variety of different capital sources to help them uh, provide competitive financing. Um, and we have talked to them about uh, some of the gaps that we are experiencing, and they seem eager to attempt to try and fill those, which is great news, in addition to trying um, just doing traditional PACE. Um, uh, PACE Loan Group is a 
well-known and solid uh, PACE lender. Uh, they have funded one other project uh, in Missouri and um, hundreds of millions of dollars elsewhere in the United States. Uh, they do cur they currently do not have a project in Missouri, um, but we are um, working with them and this the approval here and with the other uh, two districts would um, provide opportunity for both of these to access our open market program. Uh, today we are simply introducing, we don't have a resolution for you to vote on it, um, but we are introducing these two lenders um, to you for you to be able to review their materials, ask any questions. Um, it is our intent that um, e at a special meeting between now and the next quarter or upon uh, necessity for a closing project that we would bring them forward for a formal approval. Any questions for Josh? Um, I'll ask just one question. You mentioned um, that Sustainable Equity LLC is able to help fill some gaps in in financing. What are is there something specific that they're they're kind of excelling at or can excel at? You think? Um, we've talked. What we've talked about are some areas that I found is needs one or smaller projects. When you see their minimum funding. It's not that they have a direct line for fun or for projects under 500,000 or 200,000, but they're open to it and they're seeking uh, partners to do that. Um, we all understand it's more difficult because the costs are the same, um, but the um, revenue component for the other parties isn't there. Second is uh, cannabis projects. Uh, they are open to consider those, which right now we really have just one active funder and three others who are open to consider. So having one more add to that is good. Um, and then finally would be um, uh, seeking a healthcare and a service areas, specifically like think, you know, uh, grocery stores, gas stations, stuff like that. Things that we haven't, uh, St. Louis has the one, um, which is the only one in the state. Um, and it'd be good to find some others. So those are some areas that we've discussed that they've expressed openness to um, review and consider. Great, thanks. Um, yeah, I'm definitely, I think, interested in, in seeing, you know, what we can do to help smaller projects, um, especially as it, you know, as it relates to potentially some of the projects in the city that need to meet the building energy performance standard, there may be some smaller things that come up with that. Agreed. Any other questions? None for me. <clears throat> Thanks for the update. Uh, it's good to have more uh, choices available for financing. Um, let's see, next item on the agenda, also MEI on uh, collections report. Yes, so uh, if you recall, um, 2022 was the first year where um, MEI and our uh, servicer, Amerinet, did direct billing. We did that as a reminder only for those assessments that were um, up to date. So there was no delinquency, delinquency on those properties. If there was a delinquency, those um, were sent through the um, traditional process of going through the assessor and the collector. We currently have about four projects that are delinquent. Um, we are uh, in communication with each of those and uh, believe that we are making headway in each of them as well. Uh, and so unless something unseen happens, I, I foresee us being able to um, catch up on these delinquencies. Great, any questions? I know questions, just a comment regarding the delinquencies and the percentage of the amount due. Is this something that we can continue to receive, um, I guess, maybe quarterly status on them? Yes, absolutely. It's our expectation to be able to provide you a collection status report um, each quarter. 
um, okay. just so you'll know what's going on um, in case there's late payments or um, at a minimum that we can get it all caught up. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? None here. All right, moving on to the programming report from MEI. Just can you talk about this part? The yes. Maybe? So if if you're current if you're not aware, uh, the CFPB, um, which is the Consumer Protection Board, the National Board, um, has been in discussion for the development of um, new rules uh, for consumer protections for residential PACE. Uh, they came to Missouri several years ago uh, for an in-person meeting. Um, I participated uh, along with the administrator for the Missouri Clean Energy District. Uh, in a um, forum with the CFPB where they shared their timeline, their concerns, they asked some questions. Um, it looks to be that they are uh, targeting April 23rd for the release of a rule. Um, the main areas that we talked about was whether or not pay should be viewed as a mortgage and whether or not it should be considered credit. Um, we uh, shared with them the uniqueness, uh, reminded them of the uniqueness of uh, PACE as compared to mortgages uh, and specifically credit. Uh, and on the latter, reminded them that both USDA and HUD um, have partnered uh, on PACE projects uh, and would be not allowed to do so if it was traditional credit um, to emphasize the fact that it is an ad valorem tax. Um, we will, you know, I know uh, Mark is on the call with Y Green. Um, they were not as part of that call, but they are in conversations with CFPB and other areas. Um, so I'd like, if uh, possible, give Mark an opportunity to share his thoughts on this particular topic. Yeah, thank you, Josh. And uh, good afternoon, everybody. Mark Shuffle with Y Green. Um, it's it's uh, true. We've been we're, we're at Y Green along with industry has been monitoring the situation at CFPB very closely. I've previously made uh, trips to Washington. Uh, there's actually a meeting going on with industry uh, uh, this week with CFPB. Um, we're just all monitoring. Obviously, taking the position that the base product is very very different from traditional mortgage lending, and um, should be viewed very differently from traditional credit. Um, and and I, I don't have an answer. We hear the same information that Josh just relayed that they're looking at this rulemaking. This has actually been going on for a very, very long time. And uh, they're now, looks like bringing this to, to fruition and we'll keep you very posted, but we're engaged in this and, uh, and, and trying to deal with it. I think heart and soul of the argument for us and for industry in general is that um, there really is not the need uh, for federal oversight. At best, it would be considered redundant, but this is a classic example where um, governance locally is better. Uh, that when there's a consumer protection issue, um, it's handled very, very closely at the local governments that approve the PACE funding option. And it's much, um, much more reflective of people's needs. It's much more responsive uh, as opposed to the bringing to bear the kind of Goliath that is federal oversight, but um, we'll see. I've heard a uh, number of different things. Um, there are There is a, an opinion out there that CFPB is, does lack, lacks jurisdiction to do this. Obviously that would require uh, litigation to deal with that issue if they do in fact come down with onerous regulation. And so we're still in a wait and see attitude, but very much engaged in the process and I'll keep you all posted. Thanks for that update. Uh, any questions on this topic? All right. I'm here. Yeah. Um, is that oh, the, is that the extent of the updates, or is there are there more programmatic updates? 
There's more. Yep. Okay. There we go. Please. <laughs> a little bit out of order, um, but I was able to complete some of the um, case studies that we will be adding to the website um, for the projects that were completed in 2022, um, as well as the approval of um, the armory for 2023, that um, second phase of that project. Um, so this is the SOHO one, and this is the overview, um, basically overviewing the 5 million in PACE financing um, to save um, 11 million over the total term. Um, that's about it. We've been through this uh, SOHO apartments before. Um, and then the next- Patrice, if I could interject just real quickly. Um, what we've what we've recognized in our work in Show Me Pace is um, what Pace is missing is really just an understanding. It's an ignorance of it, and so word of mouth, um, seeing that your neighbor did it in some fashion or form, what the details or a project like yours really does go a long way in helping new property owners or developers utilize this tool. Um, so for Show Me Pace, we provide. Um, a very similar to identical um, outline. We'll have both a data. We'll have a database um, for people to try and search based off of size, location, sector, etc. Um, and that is our intent. And this is something that can be developed as a leave behind, as well as on our website. So um, this was. These are the first three. This is what we had. One of the one things that we had promised about um, increasing transparency. Uh, for all the work that you've done prior to us coming on board. So we'll be doing this for all projects, even the ones that we were not participating in the closing of. Thanks, Patrice. Yep. Yep. And these are the second two. Um, so the armory up size that was just approved a few weeks ago, um, as well as Jefferson Arms, which was approved back in October. Um, so these two will be going on. I was able to share these at an event that we had um, with the building exchange um, in St. Louis. Um, and people really liked seeing it and seeing kind of um, what was saved and how PACE was used uh, with those projects. Um, so what we have in the pipeline right now is we have about 33 million. Um, I think that's two projects uh, that are we hope to close uh, maybe next quarter. Um, and we're just going to continue to um, do outreach um, by I attended the talk with the Building Energy Exchange, as well as continue with uh, outreach with the Safer Simpler Coalition, as well as the Missouri Municipality. Sorry, I'm getting a little feedback. Um, as well as outreach to lenders that can fund cannabis projects and Missouri Bankers Association. Let's, let's double check. I think that's it for our program update. Um, any other questions? All right, Chairwoman, I turn it back to you. Thanks, Patrice. Um, all right, do we have a need for an executive session? No. No, all right, well then it looks like um, our next meeting is scheduled for May 10th. That's our next quarterly board meeting. That should be on everyone's calendars. Um, and I will uh, entertain a motion for adjournment then. There's nothing else. I'll move. Second. Thank you. Great. Thanks, everybody.